Okay guys, Mr. Ben here. Uh, just a recap from our last video. The nuclear force is, uh, obviously the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, and there are two forces acting here, the electrostatic force, or the coulombic force, which is trying to pull the protons apart inside the nucleus, and we have this strong nuclear force. All right, so when we start talking about the forces between protons and the separation of the protons, um, this gives you a bit of an idea about the distances we're talking about. So we have the strong electrostatic force and we have the strong nuclear force. So over a very, very short distance, we have that strong binding energy that we've got there. And we talked about the idea that the protons and proton and the proton, neutron, neutron, neutron uh, interactions are equally in terms of strong. Now, the famous equation equals mc squared is a mass defect over the speed of times by the speed of light squared. So here's an example from page 151. We have a proton plus a neutron to produce a hydrogen atom, and that's actually deuterium, isn't it? H2. So we know the mass of deuterium is 3.344 by 10 to the minus 27. The mass of a proton, 1.67 by 10 to the minus 27, and the mass of a neutron. 1.675 by 10 to the minus 27. So when we add the mass of our reactant, so our reactants here are in fact the proton and the neutron. So that's our reactants here. And so therefore we get this value here for the mass of our reactants. Right? And then we look at the mass of our products the mass of our products is simply the mass of a deuterium atom. And so therefore the mass of a deuterium atom is in fact equal to this one here. So the difference between those two things, when we do our reactants take our products, right, then if we get a positive value there, which means that we are actually getting energy out, there's a mass defect. Because right? we need to know the mass of our reactants is more than the mass of our products. So there's a loss of mass. That loss of mass is in fact energy. So once we know our mass defect, it's just a matter of putting that into our equals mc squared. So that's our mass. We've got our speed of light and we square that. And so therefore that's going to give us our answer in joules. Now there's a lot, not a lot as I said before in our video. Um, but what we need to do is convert that to electron volts. So we divide that by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. That will give us that many electron volts, which we write as 2.25 mega electron volts. Because it's not a lot of energy per reaction, but we're talking about a huge number of reactions. So therefore, that's how we get a lot of energy out of a, out of a, out of a sort of a, a nuclear reactor. All right, so that's a very, very simple reaction every one of these questions is going to be exactly the same process. Work out your mass defect, which is the mass between your reactants and your products. Obviously, if you didn't have a mass loss, then it wouldn't be an exothermic reaction, it would be an endothermic reaction, which means that you'd have to put energy in to get that reaction occurring. All right, so you need to make sure that you work through these questions, so you, you're actually quite familiar with working out the the energy of um, a nuclear reaction, whether it be a fission or fusion reaction. No difference, same sort of process, just working out that mass defect and then times it by the speed of light squared. If you need some help, make sure you come and ask me.